Hello everybody, today we are at the Glisten Respect Awards where incredible people are being honored for their impact on the LGBT community youth. First and foremost, what brings you here tonight and how exciting is it to be here? It's amazing, you know, as someone like who's queer in the industry in LA and you know, knowing the people that I do, I've had the opportunity to work with very talented people of all different gender identities or sexual orientations and you get to see that there is such a wealth of talent that we have when we acknowledge people's true identities and work together to do that myself and work with other people who do that, it's really exceptional. As a kid growing up, there weren't many organizations that I could run to and there weren't many people that were out and prominent and that I could look up to, you know, and I'm from Kansas. And so it was very important for me to be here to celebrate this night, to show that I am here, I see you, I love you, and I'm not that far from, in age from you, you know, and I am proof that anything is possible as long as you stick to your dreams. Don't listen to what other people tell you your limitations are. Who cares, you know? Just stick to your own journey. It's an incredible um, award ceremony and so inspiring. I've been coming for the last couple of years, and I'm really happy to be back again because I, I love this organization and I always leave this this night um, feeling really riled up to keep fighting the good fight. It's very important to me. I mean, this is an event I look forward to every single year because it's a it's a great reminder of the progress we're making. I always feel like every time the, the kids get up on stage and they tell their individual stories of their individual walks of life from like the small towns they're from and, and the ways that they're making change, it's a good reminder and a good way to ground us in the fact that there is good in the world and there is positive change that's happening. And what I love about the Glisten organization is that they basically help educators and people in schools to know how to advocate for students that are part of the LGBT community. Why is that so important that we do so? You know, it's a grassroots level. I mean, it's the most important time to really have the best influence in a positive sense on people when they're growing up and when impressions are being formed. I mean, when I was in school, I know luckily I was a very confident kid in who I was and my sexuality so it was never an issue for me, but for a lot of kids it can be. It's a very vulnerable time and I think the way that we inform people about our community in a global sense is so important at that age. So the more that we can have more of a focus on, you know, children and people with developing minds and understanding themselves going through so many issues like they are today, it can be a lot more helpful to do it at that time. I think that's so important because, I mean, it, it ob obviously what happens to you when you're growing up or what happens at school sticks with you forever. That's why my parents still get nervous about their high school reunions. Um, I was really lucky when I was growing up, I was kind of a, the weird thespian performing kid, and I found a theater group that were my people, and finally finding someone that believed in me or thought what I was doing was interesting, and having that safe space, of whether it be friends or teachers that uh, just made me feel like it, I was okay to be myself, it completely changed the trajectory of my life, and so that's why I'm really, I'm 100% on board with Glisten, because I think Every kid deserves to feel comfortable in their own skin. Was there anything like this growing up when you were in school? It's so funny. There was a GSA in my high school, but because I wasn't out and I wasn't educated, I didn't realize that it was for all people. I thought it was just for LGBT people, and at the time, I didn't identify as that, so it was it was a little bit scary that it existed in my school. But uh, now, it's just, I think, the more the merrier, because uh, I think it's a, a great place for uh, out and closeted kids alike to uh, just appreciate individuality. Growing up in Kansas, was there any difficulty that you faced with bullying? And what, if so, what advice do you have for kids that are going through the same thing? Oh, absolutely. Kansas is a, you know, it's a red state. It's very conservative. I used to feel uncomfortable to go certain places, you know, or to walk around and what I wanted to wear, you know. And so for me, what I tell them to do is that you got to hold on 
sometimes it just takes time. You just got to keep the patience and understand. I do not regret any of my struggles. I don't regret any of my bullying because with that, I became resilient and I became who I am today. Amen. You know? Amen. For sure, yeah, I definitely, you know, everyone goes through times where people have opinions of them and they can make you feel certain ways, but I was lucky enough to have a good support group of friends and family and I was, you know, I consider myself one of the lucky ones, even though my journey wasn't that easy yeah. all the time. You know? Yeah, I of course. I think we all did. I definitely went through it. I, you know, I was the girl that brought stuffed animals to school and would talk to them at recess. It took me a while to kind of spread my wings and start making actual human friends at school. So yes, I dealt with bullying and um, I think, you know, you you just got to find that right group and uh, just keep sticking with it. I'm glad I, I'm, I'm glad I was a weird kid. I was going to ask you, <laughs> I was going to ask you if you had any advice, but there you go. You yeah, stick it through. Just stick with it. And there, you know, when I finally found that theater group or, or coming out here and meeting all these wonderful people, you come to, there were times at school when I felt like it, it was, if I had known that I'd have all this love and open arms waiting for me, it, it just made up everything else worth it. <laughs> and you know, you mentioned moving forward, what are some steps that people in general can do to continue that progress? You know, something I'm very big on is not sensationalizing people because of their sexuality or their identity, but more allowing them the same freedom to live and be as regularly as other people are. You know, typically the straight cis community. It's important that we give people that same level of acceptance and space to figure out who they are and where they lie and you know I'm also believing things being very fluid so you don't have to find one space or one box you want to keep yourself in just be like everyone is allowed to be and you'll find a lot more enjoyment in life from that I think across the board I think it's just uh, accepting people in your own lives for whatever it is every single day it's always like making sure that you are allowing people to be themselves wholeheartedly and never shaming them for it whether it's for being LGBT or it's whether it's just like a song they like that you may not understand it's just like just allow people to be and how has your life changed since being out yeah, it's changed in every possible I couldn't even I couldn't even begin to say but it's it's infinitely better it's infinitely more colorful it's infinitely more vibrant uh, and I think I think whatever every single day for it so please talk to me a little bit about this getup you have going on it's oh. awesome Awesome. It's, yes, it's leather, it's red, it's giving us all the vibes we need. Thank you, yes. Well, you know, this, okay, so you know, because I've talked about like red carpets and fashion and stuff. I hate it when men go to a carpet and they just put on a suit and call it a day. That's not Kaylin, okay? I'm like, honey, I gotta be dressed to impress. So I was like, let me throw on this little ensemble, I'm gonna tie this little bow tie up at the top, give it a little high waisted pant, you know, show this uh, snatch okay. waist, because I put a lot of work into it. You know, so I'm always well, just trying to serve You know what? You might be giving Billy Porter a run for his money then because you know he's be serving looks. Listen, and you know what? This is the funny thing about Billy. I met Billy the first time a couple of weeks ago at the um, Pasadena Playhouse. And I told him, I was like, listen, we starting to work with the same designers and we gonna need to stop because I can't be trying to compete with you, okay? Listen, maybe you guys can step up together. Why not, this, right? We need to. Okay, we need to do like a Kaylin and Billy. Exactly. Thing. Why compete when you guys can just join forces? Boom. <laughs> I like it. I'm here for it. Let's do it. You might hate me for asking this, but with Disney Plus and all this stuff going on, Lizzie McGuire's having a reboot. Yes. Would, if Jonas Soleil had a reboot, would you be down? Oh would you gosh. be open to it? That would be really fun. Uh, yeah, of course I'm down. Yeah, right now, right? Absolutely. Because they're, they're, they made a comeback, right? I'm, I'm so happy the boys are back. It's uh, It's been really cool to see them back on the road together and love those it's boys. A good, it's a good feeling. So, all right. Yeah. It was well, that's very, a great idea. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Disney Plus. She's down. Yeah, let's do it. Aww. It was very nice to meet you. It was so nice to meet you. How has life changed for you since joining the Ellen Show? I think joining the show and being with such an amazing woman who sacrificed so much for us to even have things like this, it really helped me find myself. I used to think I knew myself, but I didn't. 
once I started working here and had these many opportunities of being out and just out in public and being able to be who I am authentically and to get paid to do it, it's when I really started to find who I was. It's been nothing but amazing. Has there been anything that you've learned from her, especially being a member of the LGBTQ community or anything that she has inspired you to do? Yes, I am always inspired by Ellen's authenticity. Ellen never changes who she is for the comfortability of anybody else. She doesn't care. You know, it's like I am who I am and you either take it or leave it. And that is what inspires me and that's how I move about my life as well. I love it. Well, you inspired me just now by talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It's nice to meet you.